Hey everybody, welcome to episode 88 of Psycho's Platters. That's right, I'm your host, Paul Pete. Sponsored or not sponsored by Krispy Kreme? Eh, someday, someday, right? Alright, just want to let you guys know, so subscribers keep going up, thank you. Views keep going up, thank you. Um, I've also discovered a bunch of vinyl related channels that if towards the end I'll go off and throw them out as a shout out. Hope everybody had themselves a great week of crate digging and and life in general. Um, let's see here. This one here is going to mostly be 45s. How about that? Uh, I've got a handful, two different sources um, on these. The first ones here I got from uh, just a handful of them I got from uh, the Good Samaritan again. Um, this one here, like I said, I, I like trying to discover, you know, I, I'll pick up 45s if they look or sound weird. Now, I'm I'm really afraid. Uh, my friend Doug Fields down here, <laughs> I think I think maybe we found something else that, that could be really scary. Um, what I mean by that really quick is this. I don't know if you remember about an episode or, episode or two ago, I dug up and found uh, some Frankia treats. That was her name. She's, I found out, passed away in September of 12. Um, and another group out of Russellville, Arkansas. Now, I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois, okay? But up there, I would pick up local presses, okay? Because you just never knew. You never knew at all. So down here, I'm like, when I saw that the label had a Springdale, Arkansas address, which is like two towns down from here, I'm like, oh, let's see what this is. Well, I did a little research about Frankie a Treat. She actually used to sing with Buck Owens, and she also, I guess, did some session backup singing session work for Capitol Records at one point or another. But needless to say, these things were kind of twangy. <laughs> they would be the stuff that if you wanted a beer and you just went to the local watering hole and this was the singer and the band you would hear for their Friday night, that's what you picked up. It's t it's just typical country twang of the 60s. What can I say? So, saying that, I found, and this one was autographed, oh boy, on Antique Records, wait till the lights go out. What's going to happen when the lights go out? I am scared, Kenny Martin. <laughs> I highly doubt he's watching this. Don't sue me. I haven't listened to it yet. But, uh, like I said here, it just says here, distributed by Antique Records, Box 102, Pittsburgh, Kansas. Now, I know you probably don't know your geography. Pittsburgh, Kansas is, um, if you were to go uh, from northwest Arkansas here, and you were to go north, okay, on what used to be 540, but they call it 49, you go up north to Joplin, Missouri. Okay, yeah, you know, the whole tornado F5, yeah, Joplin, Missouri. And then you make a left, roughly. That would be Pittsburgh, Kansas. It would be the first town that you would see, big town, in Kansas. So, makes me wonder. Okay. <laughs> um, I love the McCoys. Do you love the McCoys? I know most of you people are probably going, yeah, we all know. Hey, hang on, Sloopy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, this one was Fever on Bang. Now... You know, and that's cool because, seriously, I never find anything other than Hang On Sloopy. So for me to find this for 50 cents, it just needs to be cleaned up. It's in overall pretty good shape, I think, for what it is. Um, all these 45s are. I'm still looking for the Mercury stuff. Albums and 45s. Now, this one here, okay. Um... Pebbles and Bam Bam on Hanna-Barbera. Now, I know you're probably rolling your eyes going, oh, no, not another kitty record. But I did a little research on, on Wiki, of course, before I taped this. Um, they only existed as a record label. I could have sworn I thought it was longer than this. 1965 to 67, they were only in operation for two years. Now, of course, their mainstay was cartoon, cartoony things, okay? Um, but, you know, the... It, what I'm trying to say is, is that a lot of these things are very still hard to find. I mean, they, they've they never been reissued on CD, to my knowledge. You're talking only two years this thing was in operation. Um, 
throwing out an example, <clears throat> uh, I, when I picked up, you know, I didn't realize at that time that ki kid show soundtracks could, could be big money. That's why when I picked up at another thrift shop for 25 cents a near mint condition copy uh, on coal picks of the Jetsons, I didn't realize that that sucker books for 250 bucks. You know what? I mean, just think of it. Back then, kids really tore the hell out of their kid records, right? How many mint condition kid records do you find? At least of the shows that were popular of the day. Um, they did end up like Hanna-Barbera's label, of course, did try to get into more adult serious fare. Of course, that's where Danny Hutton got his star, start with Roses and Rainbows. Uh, the Five Americans, I think the Geo Teens, the Dynatones, there was a few other ones. So what the heck? That's my first HBR 45. Kind of cool. All right. Uh, let's see here. These next ones, let's see, I got from a dirt mall. Um, on Lori, think Doug says he's heard of them. Kind of, kind of, kind of strange. When I saw this, you know, it's like it looks like late '60s Lori label. So I can't wait to take a stab at that. Uh, let's see here. These next few German 45s. Yeah, I found some German 45s. How about Super Tramp in Paris doing Dreamer? And you started laughing. There's the front. There's the back. Sorry for the glare, but these are in the sleeves on a and M. I'll show you. I mean, I know you can, you know, normal, normal a and M sleeve, but if you took a look closer, you would see the BEMA uh, logo, which is typical for German records. Now, no, I don't know what BEMA stands for. I'm an ignorant on that one. <clears throat> but very clean, these 45s are extremely clean. Um, <clears throat> for my bestest Illinois friend, Kathy Emmer, oh, I love you. I miss you. I miss you so much. But she knows I already got her this one. Yeah, Tom, <laughs> Tom Petty. That's what it is to her. She want, If Tom Petty ever gets divorced, she wants to be the next Mrs. Tom Petty. Okay, look, don't get mad that I said that. There's probably a lot of women that aspire to do that. Because at his age, he still looks damn good, you know, on a musician's stand. Now, whatever. Anyways, uh, but this one here, off of the album Damn the Torpedoes, Louisiana Rain and You Tell Me. So here, I'll, I'll show you the 45, and then I'm going to give you my Tom Petty impression. See, it's, it's kind of purplish, sorry for the glare, with an MCA, and of course mentions German. So my Tom Petty impression. <clears throat> Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I sometimes will call her on the phone and go, yeah. All right, I'm a huge Monkees fan. Who isn't? Well, you should be. I was very excited to get a hold of this on Pacific Arts. Michael Nesmith's Cruisin' off of the Infinite Rider on the Big Dogma album from 1979. I have always loved this song. This one in Magic, this one more likely so. Go on YouTube and look at the video for the cruising. It's it's strange. It really is. I'll show you here. Like I said, on Pacific Arts, um, another purple label job on the on the bottom. It actually says these these are just beautiful stone stone mint. Now, let me see here. I ended up getting my very first Monkeys Import 45. Yeah. I've been collecting for all these years, and I finally get my very first one. Now, it's going to look a little weird for you guys. Like I said, this is German. This is on RCA Victor, not Cold Gems, because Cold Gems was only in the United States. I know. You're saying to yourself, oh, well, Paul, this is the Daydream Believer. This is the Daydream Believer going down sleeve. No. Well, it is in the United States, but not for Germany. They decided to go off and be cute. I don't know why. They they had tons and tons of photos. This is the German sleeve for Valerie and Tapioca Tundra. Um, on beautiful black RCA Victor from 68. I, I was happy to get this. The sleeve, just the top of it is slightly, it's slightly worn. 
but the rest of the overall sleeve is pretty good. Um, the record is fantastic. And one last little bit on the on the bit here. Um, I went through cassettes. <laughs> uh, I know you can't see this very well, but I found a signed Tony Orlando from '93. You never know. For a quarter, couldn't pass that up. <clears throat> also, Kath, this is probably going to end up going to you too. From 1970, this is the first edition on paperback. Our own story by the Rolling Stones. Now, originally it came out in hardcover in 65, but this got reissued in 70. I'm taking assumption as to, because I haven't read this, this is the front, this is the back, because I got it last week, that it, at least it says here, direct from England, the first complete story of the hottest group on the pop scene. And it says 32 pages of photographs. Let's see if I can throw one or two at you here. Uh, this is this is the updated ones because, like I told you, they decided to put in some '69 updates. Um, that's the reason why it was re-released. I always liked this picture. This is a nice picture. Mick Taylor, man, oh man! If you're gonna go off and replace a a recently fired, then deceased Brian Jones, Mick Taylor was great for this. I wish Mick Taylor was listening. If you're, and I know he's not, but. He kicks ass. He still kicks ass. Did you see the Stone shows on the last tour? He's still doing it. <clears throat> All right. Quick little book review and then shout outs. Trip this on the library. I reread this last year, but I decided to reread it again, and it's still fantastic to me. Are you an ACDC fan? I'm an ACDC fan. Mark Evans, Dirty Deeds, My Life Inside and Outside of ACDC. The thing is a fantastic read. Now, for you people out there, he, ACDC, he was there from early 75 to about April of 77. Um, let me show you. Here's, here's a couple. There's two pages of the book. And I still like this. That's a, that's a cool cover. But... He goes off and he, he mentions his history and tenure in the band and, and then, of course, updates and stuff like that. He would end up um, going into other bands like Finch and and Heaven in the 80s. He caught a record or two with them. Um, really, really, really cool story. And he's still down there in Australia and he still rocks from time to time. I would love to meet this man. It would be an excuse to go to Down Under, right? And... Uh, you know, I mean, ACDC, they rocked the Grammys. I, I did see that clip. Congrats. Saw they're doing tour dates, but nothing near me. I may just have to try to make a little trip. Also, real quick, if you like that type of music, okay, go on YouTube and check out Comma 77. Oh, my God. Wax Museum with Ronnie Dark had a, had a spun spun a tune or two oh man they resurrect the spirit of bon scott acdc you will enjoy it speaking of shout outs time now wax museum with ronnie dark wednesday night 6 to 9 p.m central standard time best damn radio show period ear candy for your soul go check out wax museum with ronnie dark on facebook like and subscribe please he keeps growing and growing 300th episode coming soon night owl lounge with mike adams of course best in lounge and exotica thrifty music collectors group tim smith and company <clears throat> here's some new youtube channels i want to shout out to the vinyl vault oh man this guy's good you go check him out please the vinyl vault also channel 33 rpm go check those out those are new to me this week i enjoyed both of their shows and go check out their catalog as well as well as page martin and audiophile laws which i brought up last week check them all out on youtube guys it's been great take care rock on see you next week same bad time same bad channel <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.